Yeah, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Um, uh, I, I first would like to apologize for uh, the slightly uh, clickbait title uh, of this talk. Um, so the natural title of the talk had already been used about a year ago by one of my collaborators. So I had to change it slightly. Uh, I will also offer it a somewhat different angle and uh, also give you uh, uh, an update on, on the work we've been doing. So uh, with apologies about the title, let me start by explaining it. Um, let's see if the, oh, sorry, that's probably stuck now. All right, so let me start from the second half. First of all, I, uh, I would like to make some further qualifications. Um, well, the main character of the talk will be log caveat services, and uh, I will be specifically looking at um, uh, a subset of them. So uh, log caveat services with uh, NEF uh, maximal boundary. So these are pairs, XD, also going by the name of NEF Loinger pairs, where X uh, is a smooth uh, complex projective surface, and D is a fixed divisor, which uh, well, throughout the stalk will be anti-canonical. And uh, it's a singular anti-canonical divisor uh, with simple normal crossing singularities. So uh, it will be a cycle of anti-canonical curves, um, uh, well, an anti-canonical cycle of rational curves in X, uh, where uh, writing D as the union D1 through DL, of its reducible components, I'm requiring each di to be smooth and net. So in particular, because d is singular, I will have more than one component. And um, regarding the first uh, half of the uh, title of the talk, um, well, quantum geometry is, is often called for uh, looking at enumerative invariants uh, of curves inside x. So I will be looking at uh, moduli spaces of curves in uh, X that somehow feel the geometry of D. And I got two main messages. Um, so the sort of memo of the talk is, first, uh, there are uh, several um, uh, enumerative theories of uh, curves um, built from the geometry of X and D, which have rather different flavors. Uh, but uh, the main point of the talk is that they are nonetheless equivalent in a well-defined way. And uh, moreover, uh, they are all close point solvable. And the reason uh, this is, is typically, we know how to solve one and we know how they are all related so we can solve them all in, uh, in one sweep. So this joint work uh, is based on a, on a series of three works, uh, three papers with uh, Pierre Dussault and Michel van Rael plus some ongoing work with uh, my student, uh, Yannick Schuler, who is uh, here in Sheffield. So if, um, if nothing in this slide resonates uh, with you, that's, that's completely fine. I'm, I'm gonna start uh, uh, very slowly, starting from the next one. Uh, but just in case you know what, um, uh, what these names mean, uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I, I will start by explaining a relation between um, log gromov witten invariants of the pair XD with a particular class of um, uh, gromov witten invariants of non-compact Calabi-Yau um, manifolds in uh, dimension higher than three, uh, going by the name of log local correspondence. And uh, so this works in genus zero and in trying to uplift it to higher genera, uh, I will propose a connection of flood gromov witten theory with open gromov witten theory of uh, some, uh, special Lagrangians and Calabi L3 folds. And this will be the gateway uh, because this is a central case for, uh, for physics. Uh, I will build upon some suggestions in physics literature to uh, further um, connect these, uh, these uh, three classes of invariants, the log, the local, and the open to um, BPS type invariants, um, in particular DT, the Donaldson Thomas invariants of uh, a class of symmetric quivers and various, various types of Gopakumar uh, type, uh, Vata type invariants. Um, so this is the plan. And uh, let, let me start from, from the very beginning. Um, so uh, one fundamental tool in probing the geometry of the space, whether it's like projective space or, or the quintic threefold, 
or uh, I don't know, I will be moving home uh, from right after this talk until tomorrow morning. So I got my mind uh, very much into it. So I'm, uh, if you want to probe the geometry of your like next IKEA wardrobe of uh, the room where you want to stock your boxes, what you do is you want to, you, to, to, to try and see what you can stock with it, what kind of geometric objects, what fits inside it, and try to deduce geometric properties of the space you're looking at, your target space from it. And there's, there's a gazillion examples uh, how we can do this by looking at uh, what, what chow rings are, for example, homology uh, is another example. And at the crudest level, one way you can look at this um, operation of probing is uh, a crude enumeration. So you want to count uh, uh, geometric configurations of um, objects in some given space that satisfy some meaningful set of constraints. And this is a venerable uh, subject in mathematics, uh, starting from uh, Greek antiquity with the Apollonius problem, for example. And uh, in particular, in algebraic geometry, uh, well, example questions are, for example, how many lines are there? Uh, well, 27 lines on uh, on a smooth cubic surface, or how many uh, genus zero uh, degree D curves in the plane pass through um, uh, the appropriate number of points, or uh, well, back to the first example, how many uh, curves of given uh, degree uh, and uh, genus exists on a on a quintic three fold. Now, this, these examples have an intrinsic uh, significance of um, of their own, but one thing they have in common is that I, I'm always looking, uh, and I will be looking at this talk at at um, at a case where I'm counting curves inside some, some given target, so dimension one. And because of that, um, uh, there's, um, there are some very strong connections with other domains of mathematics and mathematical physics. Uh, uh, the, the relation to string theory appearing as uh, looking at the curves of the worksheet uh, of the string propagating in, in space, that's an internal dimension of space time and the string complexification. And uh, this relation to physics uh, have um, have spurred um, connections to to other domains such as topology, like larger duality, uh, and gauge theory, number theory, modular forms, um, and all that. Uh, so there's a very long list of, of implications that we're going to see momentarily. Um, so if you want to count curves, how how would you go about doing this? Well, the typical uh, dream setup is you start from X, some complex uh, smooth algebraic variety, for example, uh, the complex projective plane, and uh, you attach to X some auxiliary variety, ideally, uh, that parametrizes the objects that you want to enumerate. Uh, so some M of X, modulus, some modulus space of curves in X, for example, plane complex. This was, this was like the second example in the previous slide for D equals 2. And the, the fact that uh, you want to enumerate objects satisfying some constraints, like for example, passing through uh, uh, a certain number of points, uh, is given by, uh, is implemented uh, by um, some, some condition on this modulized space. For example, passing through a point for a conic imposes a linear condition on on its coefficients. And you can look at, at, uh, at the varieties cut uh, by, by these equations inside this modular space, m of x, intersect them all, and if the dimension is correct, you get a number. Uh, in this case, you have a purely linear problem, so the, the result is one. And one way to phrase this is, well, this, this intersection theoretic problem is, well, Poincaré dually, you have a bunch of cohomology classes representing your incidence conditions, uh, in this case, you would have like the fifth power of the hyperplane class, since you have five linear conditions. And you integrate them uh, against your moduli space. And of course, C1 over 1 to the fifth, integrated over P5, which is a space of plate conics, uh, gives you 1. And you would like to do something like this systematically. Um, hoping that, that this, the, this setup would carry over to um, 
uh, to a more general context. But usually, uh, this doesn't make any sense as M, M of X is more often than not uh, non-compact. And uh, there are multiple, there are different choices of compactifications of this uh, moduli spaces of curves, one-dimensional objects in X uh, that uh, lead to uh, different invariants with different flavors. They're nonetheless related to one another, like for example, stable maps and stable Poisson maps. Um, now, for today, when I, when I speak of a curve, I will, um, for most of the talk, uh, think about it as a parametrized curve. So uh, the, the compactification, the compactified moduli space I will be looking at is uh, the moduli space of stable maps uh, to X. These are moduli spaces of morphisms uh, from a pointed curve, uh, C, with end punctures, P1 through Pn, uh, to my variety X. Uh, of given genus uh, and given degree D. Uh, and of course, this modulus based modulo, uh, the theory of automorphisms of the, of the domain. And if you start with smooth uh, C, uh, you obviously get, uh, well, that's, that's an open condition. You get some, uh, some non-compact moduli space. And uh, the one privileged choice of compactification is, well, you, you have to specify some, some sort of limiting behavior well, limiting objects in the moduli space. And um, for stable maps, you will require that uh, C will be, instead of smooth, it will be nodal, uh, plus some stability condition. Uh, well, the stability uh, meaning that uh, we're only ever allowed to contract uh, irreducible components of C if these components are stable, in the sense of stable curves. Now, what, what is the result? of uh, looking at this, uh, this moduli space. Um, well, it, I've been at talks where the, the result of this procedure uh, is uh, satisfy some sort of Murphy's law in, in algebraic geometry. You can, uh, especially in, in higher genus or non-sufficiently positive uh, X, uh, you can be able to engineer uh, uh, as bad a singularity as you want uh, in this moduli space. Um, so in particular, it's, it's reducible and non equidimensional but at least the compactification does what it says on the tin. It results in a proper uh, delim macro stack, uh, compact, uh, complex, if possibly singular, algebraic orbifold, and uh, with an expected dimension which is equal to the dimension of the target, uh, your target variety x, you want to count curves in, minus 3, times one minus the genus of the search curve, uh, plus the anti-canonical multiplicity of the image of your curve, plus the number of punctures. And although it is of a pure dimension, uh, it carries a perfect obstruction theory, and uh, in particular, a virtual fundamental class can be constructed in the expected dimension. And with this, uh, fixing a collection of sub-varieties, uh, closed sub-varieties, bi in, uh, in x, uh, what can try to cut conditions uh, given an enumeration uh, of uh, degree d genus g curves in x by, well, ideally you would like to, um, th there are natural evaluation morphisms associated to each of these functions, and you would like to intersect the inverse images under these evaluation morphisms uh, of, each of the, of each of these bi. And um, as before, you can take the concrete jewels of those, uh, pull them back by evaluation map, and integrate against the virtual fundamental class. And in favorable enough conditions, uh, the scare quotes can be removed, and one gets a general count of, um, of curves in X through these EIs. And one example is uh, the second question in my introductory slide. So what about the, uh, the number ND? of uh, rational degree D plane curves through uh, 3D, passing through 3D minus one points uh, in general position. Now in gromma witten theory, you would you would consider the gromma witten theory of P2. It's moduli space of stable mass of P2 in genus zero uh, and of given degree. And you would pull back 3D minus one point conditions and integrate against the, the virtual equals actual fundamental class in this case. And um, so in line with the spirit of the times where people are bombarded with uh, 
big tables of uh, numbers. I'm going to do the same multiple times uh, throughout this talk. Um, and what's the result? What, what is the result that gromov witten theory gives you? Uh, well, in degree one, you're looking at lines through two non coincident points. The result is obviously one. Uh, for conics, you get um, the result one for, um, for the plane conics through five points. When you're looking at cubics, the, the problem starts being nonlinear because um, uh, a generic cubic AP2 is not rational. So that imposes a nonlinear condition on the, on the coefficients. And the result of, uh, of the gromov witten theory calculation uh, returns the correct 12. And uh, if you look at the rest of the numbers, uh, a few things that can be said about them is that, well, first of all, they grow very rapidly and uh, not a lot is known about them. Um, for example, to this date, uh, it's, it's not known if you take the generating function of these numbers and take its Borel transform, it's not known what the, the radius of convergence of this is. So it would be one over x zero in this asymptotic growth. So there's, um, there's some mystery going on, but one thing that we do have is um, a, a nonlinear recursion that, um, that's satisfied by these numbers and determines them completely. Although it's, it's difficult to solve the recursion, this recursion exists and is due to the, the fact that this modular space is a modular compactification. Uh, so the result of the WDDD equations gives um, a complete solution to all degrees, uh, uh, a recursive expression for all degrees for these NDs. And uh, in terms of generating functions of these numbers, um, it turns out that there's a very special nonlinear Hamiltonian nonlinear RDE uh, that, uh, that this satisfies. It's a solution of uh, the Penelope 6 equation, a special case of the Penelope 6 equation. And this is just a glimmer of a more general connection that uh, gromov witten theory has with uh, the theory of nonlinear integral systems. So there's a, there's a whole lot of structure that underlies uh, this sort of catalog of numbers that you can attach to any um, complex algebraic variety by considering its modular space of stable maps. And um, so this is already uh, fairly exciting, but I would like to uh, raise my stakes a little bit. And instead of looking at moduli spaces of uh, maps to X, I would like to consider something that's sensitive to not only the geometry of X, but, uh, but also um, the geometry of a fixed divisor, D in it. And um, throughout the rest of my talk, I will look at, well, X again will be a smooth complex projective variety of dimension M. And D, as in my first slide, will be a singular anti-canonical divisor, um, which uh, with simple normal cross and singularities and uh, with each reducible component uh, uh, required to be smooth and net. So for example, well, the simplest example one can think of is one take X to the three sphere, the complex projective line, and D to be the union of the north and south pole, zero and infinity. Or for N equals two, uh, for, um, for N equals one, this is actually, um, uh, yeah, this is still an example. Um, I can consider it a smooth cubic, uh, so irreducible with n smooth and f. Uh, for l equals two, I can consider a slightly more general setup where I have uh, a conic and the line that's not tangent to it. Or I can take d to be uh, the toric boundary, uh, the complement of the big torus orbit. So the union of the three coordinate axes. And some jargon that I will employ is that a smooth net pair is toric if X is a toric variety and D is a toric boundary and is a Loinga pair, or which is short uh, for log Calabial surface with a uh, maximal boundary, if um, X is a surface and D is singular. And um, recall that I required uh, each irreducible component of D uh, to be uh, smooth and deaf. So in particular, D has to be reducible. Uh, L number of component, irreducible components has to be greater than one. And there's a technical condition whose relevance I'm, I'm going to explain uh, in a minute. Uh, I'm going to call an F-Loinger pair tame 
if um, uh, the number of irreducible components is either greater than two or each irreducible component has positive self-intersection. Uh, it turns out there's a finite catalog of smooth deformation families of, um, uh, of net low angle pairs and all of them but three are tame. And for the rest of the talk, I'm going to stick to low angle pairs, uh, XD. And I'm going to consider some classes of enumerative invariants that both the field of geometry of both X and D in very different ways. So the, the first example, for the first example, I'm going to use D. Uh, are there any questions up to this point? Can't see you, so you have to speak. Al? Not in the chat. All good? Not in chat, great. Right. So. Um, so I'm going to use D to define an embedding of X into some higher dimensional KBL, um, KBL variety, which is given by the total space of the direct sum of the dual line bundles to each reducible component. So there's a total space of rank L bundle on, uh, on X, for example, in the case of X being uh, P2 and D being the unit of the line of the conic, uh, I'll be looking at a total space of O minus one the line plus O minus two for the conic over P2. And uh, naively, I would like to compute uh, the number, more precise, the gram weight and invariant associated to uh, the degree D genus zero curves in this total space that pass through uh, L minus one points in X. Now, the, the drill that, that, that I described um, uh, in, in the general setup required that, well, one would like to set up some compact moduli space uh, with uh, almost regardless of uh, its possible pathologies so long as they can be dealt with. And uh, there is some non-compactness here already in the game because uh, this total space is non-compact. But the netness condition implies that uh, stable maps uh, to, uh, to the total space um, are not allowed to deform holomorphically of the zero section. So this is really, as a, as a scheme, this modular space is really modular space that maps to the base. Um, however, the two natural obstruction theories differ. And this is encoded in some canonical obstruction bundle, uh, whose fiber at a smooth moduli point is the H1 of, well, the putback of uh, the O minus DI uh, under your map uh, phi. And the virtual fundamental class is defined uh, by intersecting the fundamental class, well, virtual fundamental class um, of the base with the older class of this obstruction bundle. This cuts the expected dimension uh, down to L plus N minus one, uh, which will soon reappear. And uh, the desired number will be obtained, as we did before, by pulling back uh, L minus one point conditions uh, on X through the, to the moduli space and integrating against the virtual fundamental class. And there's a second class of invariants that are completely different a priori. And in this case, I would like to compute uh, the number of degree D um, rational curves in X uh, through L minus one points. So this, these are actually curves in the surface that I want to impose that they have some prescribed tangency uh, some prescribed contact order at each reducible component di of d. Now, so if we look at uh, the case of uh, the line and conic, uh, the generically the intersection of say the degree d curve in the plane uh, with a conic uh, will be given by two d points by the zoom, by d points on the line, and I want to place myself in the sort of maximally special situation where these intersection points are completely degenerate to a single point. So I want a unique point of maximal tangency on each divisor. And I would like to enumerate the curves to satisfy these constraints. Um, so first of all, first check, can we construct a, um, a compact moduli space parameterizing these objects? And one runs immediately in trouble when trying to do so, uh, because one can think of uh, having a sequence of say relative stable maps with maximal tangency at these devices where in the limit, one as one approaches the boundary, uh, uh, one has 
say, an entire irreducible component that falls entirely into the divisor, so the, into the limit. So, so in, in the limit, the, the, the notion of contact order is not well defined anymore. And th there's a number of well, regularization scheme, as it were, uh, to deal with this problem uh, in both symplectic and algebraic geometry, mostly amounting to um, uh, doing something to the target itself. And one particular efficient way uh, and uh, almost the, well, the, the sort of go-to procedure to deal with this in algebraic geometry is to um, uh, view instead X as a log scheme for the divisorial log structure uh, induced by D. So where one essentially embraces the fact um, that it could be components falling into the divisor, but somehow the notion of contact order is remembered in some way in terms of some homomorphism of, of ghost sheets. And so there is a modulized space of block stable maps of, um, uh, of the pair XD in degree D, which under some uh, well technical conditions that I'm not going to explain, some basic choice of um, um, basic set of choices, is a proper log daily macro stack of expected dimension the same as the one for the uh, local moduli space, uh, the, the color B out guy of the previous slide. But again, uh, there's a virtual fundamental class of expected dimension, and uh, the desired invariance can be computed by um, uh, pulling back point conditions from X and integrating against the virtual fundamental class. So these two, two types of invariants have nothing to do with each other, a priori, the way, the way they're, they're born. Uh, and as I did for uh, the case of ordinary stable maps to the plane, let me take uh, P two and with line of the conic, which will be the the running example of uh, of my talk. And uh, let's look at the numbers that one gets. Now, comparing to so the last column that you see is is the the, the ordinary gromov with invariance of the plane, and compared to those, uh, one thing that immediately uh, springs to attention is that uh, although the geometry is much more involved, uh, the numerology behind this uh, the, of uh, uh, say the stable of numbers uh, is a lot simpler. Uh, so the growth is no longer factorial, it's only exponential. It's, it goes like four to the D. And in fact, unlike the invariance ND, which only satisfy a, a nonlinear recursion that we don't know how to solve, uh, they can be given a closed form. These invariants are particularly simple. They're just central binomial coefficients, 2D choose D. And uh, second thing I would like to attract your attention to is that the ratio um, of uh, the log and local invariants, uh, again, this is this one's easy to, uh, to see how, how it works by looking at the table. It's just uh, a quadratic road, 2D squared with some sign. And if you try to do the same thing for uh, the more generic case of P2 relative to the toric boundary, the union of um, uh, the three toric prime divisor. Uh, well, I probably don't need to convince you. Uh, uh, you can probably tell already from the first column what these invariants uh, behave like. Uh, they're just D squared. And once again, the ratio of uh, the log and local invariants has well, some sign pattern uh, times some power law. And, and, and the power of the exponent of a power law is once again a number of components. Now this, uh, I'm presenting this as a complete accident, but it turns out that um, over time, uh, a somewhat substan uh, substantial catalog of examples uh, has been constructed where uh, the same phenomenon seems to occur by considering like X um, found surfaces, for example and a variety of choices of D. And uh, it took, uh, well, almost two decades before, well, around 15 years before people smelled the coffee and came up with uh, postulating this as a general and universal relation between these two very different classes of invariants, namely that the log invariants of the pair XD should be proportional to the local invariants of um, uh, of X and D, so that the, the ordinary Gromovic invariance of the total space of uh, O minus the, well, the direct sum of uh, uh, O minus the irreducible components of D 
by some universal factor, which is again some some sign uh, times the intersection multiplicity of um, the degree of your stable curve D with each reducible component. And um, now this is a striking relation, and it's a very useful one. Uh, the the left hand side is is a is the answer. Uh, well, first of all, under somewhat general conditions, uh, especially in the case of more than one component, the variance on the left hand side are integer and, and they, they have uh, they are enumerative. So they do provide the answer to um, um, a geometric problem with some technology that's rather sophisticated and they're particularly difficult to compute. And on the other hand, the right hand side, um, it has some invariants whose integral structure is a bit uh, more hidden. Uh, but on the flip side, they can be computed very effectively because of opticality of condition where mirror symmetry methods are particularly powerful. So in a sense, this, this equation is something that looks like beauty equals power, and we can use the right-hand side to solve the left-hand side, for example. Now, uh, this was conjecture, but what is the evidence that we look behind this conjecture? Uh, well, first of all, in the smooth case, uh, when these are reducible, this was proved by uh, Van Grell, Graeber, and Rudat in their original paper. And a couple of years later, uh, in John Orkley, Kirk Dussault, and, and Michel Van Grell, uh, we established this for the case of Torian pairs, um, including singular cases. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we had until uh, a couple of years ago. And the first theorem I'd like to present is that um, uh, this conjecture is a, a theorem also in the case of uh, knowing pairs. So log Calabial surfaces with maximal boundary. Um, and we solve this conjecture in a very strong way. we we'll prove the conjecture in a very strong way uh, by proving first that both the log and local, th the log and local theory are in, uh, close form solvable. In particular, the log theory is close form solvable. And uh, as a result of our solution, we can witness that uh, the predicted equality between log and local invariance up to a factor holds. And since I'm, th this probably a sizable uh, chunk in, in the public that, uh, that's familiar with mirror symmetry, let me, I'm just gonna explain briefly what the idea behind the proof is. Well, the idea is that for this higher dimensional Calabial manifolds, well, in general, the gram width and theory of total spaces um, uh, of, say, some rank L vector bundle on, um, on a variety X can be reconstructed from that of the Bates. Uh, that's uh, this Tom Coates' thesis uh, in, in 2001. And the case of uh, that we're looking at now, uh, where X is a surface, and uh, X is a, is a direct sum of jewels of, of um, uh, line bundles dual to uh, net components of a divisor. Uh, it's particularly simple, and it's, it, 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 it turns out that it's amenable to uh, a complete solution in closed form. And the way this is achieved is by considering a, deform a degeneration to, or smooth degeneration to a case, uh, smooth deformation to a case where um, X itself is historic, even though these not. And one can apply um, toric mirror symmetry methods to, com to compute the I function for um, uh, the resulting vector bundle. And uh, this, um, uh, this can be done at a price of probably slightly enlarging the pseudo effective cone by adding some extra minus two curves, which can uh, contribute to the mirror map. But a sort of miracle that happens is that the mirror map is inverted in this case. It's an algebraic mirror map, which is closed form invertible. And since the I function is some closed form hypergeometric uh, function, one obtains closed form uh, hypergeometric expressions for the drama weight invariance. The reason why we got the binomial, uh, central binomial coefficient to DGSD for P2 line at a conic is a manifestation of, of this phenomenon. And in the case of multipoint uh, insertions, uh, there's a reconstruction theorem in the quantum cohomology that allows to treat those starting from the knowledge of, uh, of the small j function. And I introduced this notion of tameness, which covered most cases. Uh, so just to remind you, tame meant that either D had more than uh, two reducible components, or each component had positive self-intersection. 
And uh, the way tameness manifests itself in the local calculation is that in this case, the mirror map is trivial. Uh, so that's why we get close upper geometric expressions uh, for the coefficients of ratios of uh, product of binomials, essentially. And on the log side, uh, by definition of tame, each uh, of a tame line up here, well, each net line up here is, um, has either two components or non-exclusive or uh, it is tame. So the union of the two component setting and the tame setting encompasses the whole set of net line pairs. Now for, for two components, we can prove a comparison theorem uh, using the generation methods uh, between the, the local and the log invariance that returns the predicted formula of uh, Van Gerel, Greger, and Rudat. Uh, and in particular, we can compute the local invariance, sorry, the log invariance from the knowledge of the local ones. And for the tame setting, we can do the opposite. Um, there's um, the, the log invariance can be computed by appealing to uh, a tropical correspondence theorem uh, for an associated toric model. Uh, whose combinatorics can be um, can be tracked down completely for because of the tameless condition, which in the setting uh, is uh, synonymous to having finite scattering. And uh, as we did for the so the case of toric pairs, both sets of invariants can be computed, and one can 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 just look at um, uh, at the resulting equality as uh, as a color. So that's. This, this is the end of, of at least uh, some story. So we have this genus zero invariance of higher dimensional Caudillac manifolds uh, that are related to well, this class of higher, uh, um, higher dimensional Caudillac uh, total spaces over surfaces. And uh, we have the log theory, um, the relative theory of the, uh, of the surface relative to this uh, union of divisors. And these turn out to be fundamentally the same. Um, and this was wholly in genus zero. So one natural question would be, is, is there any way to have, uh, to make some sort of headway into the higher genus theory from, uh, from what we've done? And it turns out that for log theory, we can bootstrap the genus zero results to get all genus results in, uh, without essentially any extra effort. Um, now, in higher genus, the moduli spaces of log stable maps has an expected dimension that goes linearly. In fact, it's like G plus the expected dimension for the genus zero setting. So in order to, to uh, extract a number, uh, one has to cap, uh, it has to either consider uh, additional point conditions or cap with some uh, tautological class. And um, it turns out that it's particularly meaningful to consider the, the genus zero Sorry, the, 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 the genus G intersection numbers obtained by capping L minus one pullbacks of coin conditions with a lambda class. So the top turn class of the Hodge, uh, of the Hodge bundle on modular space. And uh, it turns out that the scattering calculation that's relevant for genus zero or slash tropical calculation of these invariants that's relevant for genus zero can be uplifted to a Q-deform scattering calculation that gives closed form expression no longer hypergeometric, now Q hypergeometric for the uh, for the whole the entire higher genus theory, um, higher genus logarithm theory uh, of X and D. And at this point, the, the natural question would be: is, is there a natural counterpart on the local side? So can can we formulate a, a higher genus version of this log uh, local correspondence principle? And it turns out it doesn't even make sense to ask the question. Because unlike the log invariance, uh, the, the local invariance, uh, what expected dimension of the moduli space of stable maps to, um, to the Calvian total spaces we've been looking at, becomes negative as soon as uh, the genus is greater than one. It decreases in genus instead of increase. Uh, so there's not even a moduli space of higher genus stable maps to play with. Um, and list of all uh, computing invariants uh, from. Uh, so there's, this reaches quite quickly some sort of impasse, and the proposal we have to uh, sort of overcome this, this hurdle is to actually look at this, this Gromov Witten invariance of local Calviao and folds as some open Gromov Witten invariance from n minus three hold uh, uh, reading surfaces, 
uh, of a class of special Lagrangians in a local Calabial free tool. So this should be the same in genus zero. And for higher genus, these opening variants are still well-defined even though the local ones are not. And these are the key to refine the log local correspondence and to some sort of log local open correspondence. Now, what, what's the motivation behind it? Well, if, if you can view a, a meromorphic function to, uh, to P1 uh, with, uh, with a given ramification profile, profile as, as the limit of, of some open map from, uh, from an open Riemann surface obtained by basically stretching the punctures open, cutting away some, some small uh, uh, microstructure of the branching circles. Uh, around the punctures to uh, a disk obtained by again stretching the puncture open on the image. Um, when when you look at maps to to, to more general targets, the, the general expectation you might have is that the condition of having maximal tangency along the divisor can be replaced by having some prescribed winding um, uh, around the, some some Lagrangian near the divisor, and uh, if you look at invariants, in, in the simplest examples, this, this actually satisfied modulo uh, an additional factor, which is exactly the one that appears in the in the Van der L greater root of formula. And to top, so in this would basically identify the open invariants with the local ones. Um, and there's some physics expectation that this might be true as well, uh, which comes from um, uh, so-called higher dimensional geometric engineering of uh, quantum field theories. But there's a, there's a very well-known story in, in mathematical physics, which identifies the, the topological A model on a local Calabian three singularity, or well, a class of local Calabian three singularities, uh, within a cross of isotope partition function of some gauge theory specified by singularity on uh, um, the circle compactification. Um, uh, of a theory with minimal supersymmetry in five dimensions. And one can try and play this game one dimension higher and look at uh, what the gravity width and potential of local Calabial uh, singularities, uh, um, resolution of local Calabial singularities computes. And this engineers some super potential terms in the low energy effective theory for some n equals two theory in um, uh, on R2 times S1, or some n equals two to theory in type two A complications on R2. So there, there are some terms of ineffective actions of quantum field theories that are computed by gram witten invariants of local fourfolds, such as O minus one plus O minus two on P2. But also, uh, these same terms can be computed by considering um, uh, the, the world volume theory of D4 brains wrapping some Lagrangian in, in a local Calabi L3. So in that case, uh, uh, a counter holomorphic disk on, disk on this Lagrangian would compute the same term the same class of terms. Now, it so happens that some theories can be engineered in both ways, both as um, effective theories from fourfolds and as theories of, uh, from uh, engineered by, by brains in a, in a local Calabi L3 for rapid sum of Lagrangian. So when this is done in both ways, you have a predicted that conjectural identity between Gromowitten, ordinary Gromowitten invariance of the fourfold and open Gromowitten invariance of the threefold. So the drill would be, uh, starting from a lowing up here xt, one can try and uh, and place themselves in in a in a setting where uh, the open gram witten theory is, is is defined. Uh, so one can replace one divisor uh, with a twist using the log uh, the local um, log local correspondence. Uh, so one considers the threefold o minus dl on x, say o minus two. When dl is the, when l is equal to two and d2 is the conic on p2, and then replace maximal tangency on all the other devices by open conditions on some special Lagrangians in uh, in the complement. Now the expectation is that in this threefold situation there might exist a sensible definition of the open invariance, and by what I said before, the open invariance co uh, coincide with the local invariance, and although the local invariants are not uh, defined for higher genus, the open ones are. And they are related by a natural Q deformation of uh, the log local correspondence. Precisely, 
we can associate some special Lagrangian pair to uh, a natural end of pair XD, that would be the expectation, uh, where, well, the first conjecture is just what I said about genus zero. And in higher genus, one has some Q refinement uh, associated to the last factor uh, that gives the twist into to three dimensions. Uh, so the, the last 10 minutes or so of the talk have been slightly chaotic. I will be very cross if I were a member of the audience. Uh, uh, at the minute, I haven't told you. So I've been basically flapping my hands saying, this log local thing doesn't, have, doesn't make any sense in higher genus. I want to look uh, at a surrogate for the local theory that makes sense in higher genus. This should be given by open Bromo with an invariance of some special Lagrangians. And I haven't told you what the special Lagrangians are, whether it makes sense to even speak about open Bromo with an invariance, which are notoriously difficult to define, and uh, whether this conjecture has any uh, reason to be true at all. So I'm, I'm going to answer all these three, hopefully, uh, well, implicit questions in, in the next slides. Now, the key point is that given a, a tail lined up here, we can associate to it uh, some semi-projective Akanagich buffer pair. That's the claim by the procedure of the previous slide. And what does this mean? Uh, what is a, an Akanagich buffer pair? Well, it works as follows. You can look at C3. Well, C3 is an integral system in a, in a plethora of ways. And one way to really to look at it as a completely uh, algebraically completely integrable system um, uh, is uh, through the Harvey laws of type ratio. So in this case, the moment map is given by uh, what you can see on the slides. So it's a different of squared moduli, uh, um, a squared, uh, squared modulus uh, for, for the FN coordinates, uh, Z1, Z2, Z1, uh, and Z3, and the imaginary part of the product Z1, Z2, Z3. And uh, a generic fiber is given by a product of a, uh, a two torus uh, times a real line. So the, the, the integral manifold uh, generated by the Hamiltonian vector fields for these three Hamiltonians has two circles for the first two um, uh, moment maps, uh, components of the moment map uh, times uh, a real line, which is the real part of Z1, Z2, Z3. So this is what happens generically, uh, but there are special fibers. So where this T2 times R, which is a, a cylinder uh, uh, times a, a circle, uh, has, well, the throat of the, of the cylinder sort of shrinks to zero size. So you, you strangle the throat of the, of the cylinder to co two copies of an R2 times S1. And uh, this happens when two of these FN coordinates co uh, coincide. Uh, so it's happening in co-dimension two. And P can either of these two R2 times S1 gives the so-called Akanagich buffer brain. So the, the locus where you have special fibers, the critical value set of, of this vibration, um, is given by uh, some, um, some metric trivalent graph. Uh, on uh, on R three, and you can isotope it a little since it's, it happens in co-dimension two to some planar lattice graph. And uh, the way you recover your original toric uh, variety is what well, the graph that describes the discriminant locus is the dual graph of uh, a high twine slice of the fan. So because a toric Calabi-L threefold is uh, is not compact, is uh, its fan is a cone over some. Um, uh, some convex lattice polygon. And, and the dual graph of that will give you the discriminant locus of this Harvey laws of vibration. Now, for this set of Lagrangians, there are several approaches to define open invariants. Um, and the option of those is that there always exists a, um, a moduli space of open stable maps to Y with boundary on L uh, of expected dimension zero for all general. And uh, this supports a virtual fundamental class and computing its degree defines some open invariants for you. And you can construct some generating function for those that end with an open of Q. Q as before is like E to the I H bar. And so uh, the way this works in practice is uh, you construct a threefold by Twisting by the last component of your device routine from a tangling pair. 
So you take, for example, P2 minus a line and consider uh, the total space of O minus uh, the line bundle due to the conic. Uh, so O minus two on C2, which is C3. You have a, uh, an Agarange buffer Lagrangian, which is canonically specified uh, by the divisor DI, say the line. And there's a canonical identif identification between relative homologous degree of Y with boundary in L with those of X. Say for the case of P2 with a line and a conic, what you do, well, at, at a graphical level is, well, you first delete a line and then you twist by uh, O minus C, which is O minus two. O minus two on, on A2 is just a trivial bound. So you get uh, the fan of C3, so a cone over, over a triangle. And uh, the discriminant locus is just given by the dual graph. And an Aganagic buffer gray is just a fiber over one of the edges of um, well specified by the back choice of the line uh, of uh, the resulting Tori Calabian free graph. So any tame Loenga pair has an allied special Lagrangian uh, pair in a Calabian threefold, whose open gromma weakening invariants are defined for all genera uh, for all ge uh, genera. And the last question that I need to answer is, are, are they related in, in some well-defined way or in the expected way given by the physical slash symplectic heuristics? And, uh, and the answer is yes. And once again, this is the consequence of a manual entire solution of both the log and the uh, open theory to all Uh And the result, the, the higher genus log open correspondent holds uh, for this state lying up there. Um, so if you're familiar with um, holomorphic discounting in, uh, in Tori Calabi out threefolds, the way you would like to compute the, the central binomial coefficients 2D choose D, enumerating D group D curves with maximal tangency along the line of the conic in, in the plane, well, you would compute the, um, uh, the one leg topological vertex um, amplitude for, for the Tori Calabi out three, which is just some short function in the principal instable specialization and the moment you want to express everything in terms of winding numbers to, to compute open gromma witten invariance, the result is the desired prefactor in the conjecture times some Q binomial coefficient to D choose D. So if you if you multiply by the predictive prefactor, you just get the, 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 the Gaussian binomial to D choose D. And in genus zero, you take the limit Q tends to one, which, which gives the, uh, the log calculation. From a count of this to an Calabia threefold. In, this, in, a, in a very simple copy of three, it's just affine space uh, with a simple choice of, of special Lagrangian in it. Now, the fact that the, the log gram witten theory of surfaces is, is related to, um, uh, to the, the open gram witten theory of, uh, um, of special Lagrangians in uh, toric copy of three folds brings about well, the best of both worlds. So in mirror symmetry, we know that things are simple when stuff is toric, and uh, things is simple or particularly meaningful when uh, we're looking at Calabi out threefolds. So in this setting, we're, we're relating um, the log theory of Loenga pairs to, well, the intersection of these two words, toric Calabi out threefolds. And uh, this is a central case in physics, and it, it, this is like appealing to, you know, it's like calling the fifth cavalry regiment in terms of the technology you can employ to compute log invariance from um, well, string theory inspired dualities, which have been subsequently proved. Uh, so in particular, to attain log of pair, we can assign a large and dual transign theory interpolation uh, given by, by a large n um, duality of transign theory with um, topological A model. There are several all genus calculation scheme and one that we'll use the one that I've used in the previous slide is, is one of those, a so called topological vertex of Akanagic, Klemmer, and Yambafa. There's some st uh, statistical mechanical model that underlies each law in the pair, given by well, some random matrix integral or some, some melting crystal model or some, some web of charge free permanence in two dimension. In a way, much more pointed than the relation between P2 with a, uh, with a pair limit six hierarchy, there's a classical integral hierarchy. Uh, that's naturally associated to each line of pair, uh, which would probably be impossible to deduce looking by looking at the log theory alone, which is some two to the, uh, some reduction of two-dimensional total hierarchy. 
There are mirror, mirror theorems that apply both to the genus zero and the higher genus theory, also including open invariants given by so-called remodel B model, proven by uh, uh, Melissa Liu, uh, Bong Fang, and uh, Zheng Zhu Song. Uh, there's some underlying integral, integral structure in terms of an open version of Gopal Kumar of invariants, um, owing to the fact that we're looking at a Calabiao uh, free situation. And some reformulation in terms of Quiver Donaldson Thomas invariance, and some interpretation of, of the log invariance uh, in terms of surface operators in, in some four dimensional uh, gauge theory associated to, to your Calabial 3. Now, say for the for the simple case of P2 with a line of the conic, uh, our generating function of higher genus log invariance is um, coincides with a color extreme or home flip one of Jan not as a result of some, some matrix model. It can be extracted from some restriction of the tau function of the KDD, discrete KDD of Volterra hierarchy. It can be computed on the, by the topological recursion on the most probably simplest uh, spectral curve of C star cross C star. And they are related in a very definite way with Donaldson Thomas invariance of the two quiver. Um, so uh, this is probably something, it's sort of a motivational slide without much content in it. So let me add content now. And a lot of these connections are interesting per se, uh, but at the minute, uh, I don't know how to use them to learn something new about log invariants. Uh, but for three of them, and uh, I've already described one. So the, the fact that there's an all genus calculation scheme allows to prove the conjecture that we formulated uh, using the topological vertex formalism. And uh, two I haven't spoken about yet, which is the, the existence of an underlying integral structure for the log invariants and the relation with quiver DP theory. So this is what I'm going to do next in the remaining five minutes. Now, for as a first application of the this log open reinterpretation, um, uh, it, the Gromowitan theory of, of Calabial L plus two folds um, was uh, long thought to have the same integrable uh, underlying integrable properties that the ordinary Gromowitan theory of Calabial three folds has, namely that the Gromowitan invariance of uh, a higher dimensional Calabial manifold should be expressible in terms of some uh, more fundamental set of BPS type invariants by some multi covering formula. And uh, for L equals two, so for Calabial four folds, this was um, uh, proposed by Clement Pandar Pond in, uh, in 2008, 2007. And it was predicted that invariants computed by the sort of uh, divisor sums involved in the Mobius function uh, are integral despite not being manifestly so. And this has received, received the proof for compact Calabial n folds uh, using symplectic methods. And a direct corollary, which is uh, it's a zero f for corollary of the log open correspondence of um, uh, that we just proved, is that this follows with uh, by doing essentially nothing uh, as a direct corollary of um, of the log open principle. Uh, and the reason for that is that you, uh, there's a parallel set of open BPS invariants uh, considered by Uguri and Bafa associated to open counts of open gram width and invariants of, um, of special Lagrangian pairs uh, in local Calabial three folds now. And it turns out that the, the formula that defines them is exactly the same as the one that applies to the higher dimensional closed Calabial situation. And since the, the formula is the same and the gromo with invariants are the same, an immediate corollary is that these two classes of invariants are the same. But not only that, we know a lot more about the open BPS invariants than we know about the Gilguri Buffer invariants than we know about the Clampandari Pando ones or Yunel Parker ones. And in particular, starting from uh, just combinatorially from the geometry of X and D, we can construct a symmetric quiver whose um, numerical Donaldson Thomas invariants coincide with the absolute value of the open invariants. And as a consequence, by the theorem of Efimov in 2011, we know that these DT invariants are non negative integers. So this proved the clamp on the, the conjecture clamp on the Riponde integrality essentially by doing nothing. And for example, in the case of P2 with the line of the conic, uh, one can read off from the geometry of the Tori Calabial threefold what the predicted uh, adjacency matrix should be for the associated symmetric quiver. And this would be just a, one of the simplest quiver possible, just, just a two-loop quiver. 
And uh, there are some implications also in for uh, a possible, so there's been a lot of effort in trying to uh, give a shift theoretic interpretation to this BPS invariance uh, by four dimensional version of Donaldson Thomas theory in terms of moduli of well, stable sheets, stable pairs on, on Calabial fourfolds. It was conjectured by Tsao Malik and Toda that these should be the same. The, 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 the resulting fourfold uh, DT invariance should coincide with the claim boundary Pandu ones. And this has been checked in a paper by Tsao Kun Monavari, a really nice paper last year. And part of the checks hinge on the local. Uh, this follows from a, a direct calculation of the fourfold DT invariance. And uh, the comparison with omega D hinges on the, the, the calculation of, of the local invariance from. Um, uh, from our theorem in June zero. And there's a third application, but I'm out of time, about some refined integrality for the log invariants, um, uh, which I'm, I'm just going to skip. And all I said was in a smooth setting, but one can, can replace variety, uh, well, smooth variety with smooth million month for stack in pretty much everything I've said. And so the whole story generalizes to orbitals, and instead of having a, a finite list, a finite catalog of examples, uh, this will lead to an infinite list by essentially playing with the order of the singularities. So, for example, in the case of uh, the weighted projective plane with weights 1, 1, n, and d1 align, and um, while well, passing through the point with um, uh, zn stacking s and d2, uh, a smooth member of the linear system given by the union of the other uh, two toric divisors, uh, the resulting quiver, well, there's again an open uh, geometry, um, which is C3 with some toric Lagrangian brain, and uh, the resulting quiver is the n plus one loop quiver. And so to include, yeah, I guess I'm uh, one minute late. Um, I got two main statements. Um, so for uh, in, in varying degrees of generality for either an F or tame line of pairs, the logram with an invariance of the pair uh, coincide with um, in June zero coincide with the local gram with invariance for an F. And uh, in higher genes, the, lo the log ones coincide with the open ones, um, up to some, some simple universal prefactor. And under some BPS type uh, transformations, the, um, the log invariants are essentially DT invariants of a symmetric quiver. Uh, which in turn are, are Gobakumar Bafa invariants of uh, either um, a higher dimensional Calabiao uh, total space on the surface or um, Yoguri Bafa invariants of the special Lagrangian uh, pair, uh, Tori Calabiao three pair. And moreover, uh, all these invariants are closed form computable. And as a matter of fact, they're all computed uh, for, all, for all these uh, net and tape longer pairs. And I'm two minutes over time, so I got some questions of my own, uh, but uh, I'll be very happy to take yours. Thank you very much.